Hello and welcome to Net Present Value with XNPV. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. So how do smart investors know if an investment is worthwhile? They don't guess, they measure. And one of their tools is called Net Present Value. Now stick around till exercise three. I'll show you how this function handles irregular cash flow dates, which is something the normal NPV function just can't do. Let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. In this warm up exercise, I wanna talk about three functions, PV, NPV and XNPV. Let's start with PV or present value equals PV. The first argument is the rate and that's the discount rate we've stored here in C13. Comma, the next argument is the number of periods and that's the number of years we've stored in C12. Comma, the next argument is the payment amount. That's the value here in C11. Let's close function and enter. And here we see the present value of this series of cash flows is 497. And by the way, you'll notice the PV function defaults to showing a negative when the return amounts are positive. Let's go ahead and flip the sign by throwing a leading dash in here and hitting enter. Now let's go to the NPV function. Equals NPV. The rate is our discount rate in C13, comma, and the values are these values stored in F11 through F13. Close function and enter. Here we get the same amount, 497. So far, so good. Now let's use the XNPV function. Equals XNPV. The first argument is the rate, that's the discount rate in C13, comma, the next argument is the values, those are the values in I11 to I13, comma, and the next value is a range of dates. These are the actual cash flow dates. And these are the values stored here in H11 to H13. Close function and enter. Here we get 547, and this is different than the other two functions. So like, what's going on? Well, here's what's going on. By default, the present value function assumes that these payments are received at the end of the period. In other words, at time one. So it discounts them back to time zero. That's also true with the NPV function. It assumes these payments are at the end of the periods. Now with the XNPV function, there's no built-in assumption about the timing. It's given explicitly with our date range, and it assumes time zero is in our first row. So let's take a look at the present value function. We specified three arguments, but there's two additional optional arguments. The next one is the future value amount. We'll just leave that at zero, comma, and the last argument is the type. And here we can see we have two choices end of period, which is the default if we don't explicitly state it, or we can also do beginning of the period. So if we type zero, it's the default option, and we hit enter and we get 497, and that's consistent with the NPV function. Let's go back and change this to beginning of period, enter, and now we get 547, and that's closer to what the X NPV function returns. And I wanted to start here so that we can understand how timing works across all these functions. And now that we're warmed up, let's head to the next exercise, exercise two. Now what I like about the XNPV function is it easily handles the initial investment. So here we can include the initial investment and its date along with the future series of cash flows and their expected dates. Equals XNPV. The rate is our discount rate stored in C13, comma, the values are the values in B6 to B11, and the dates are the dates in C6 to C11. Close function and enter. So this is telling us that the net present value is $650, and that includes the initial investment amount. And since this is a positive value, it means that generally this investment would be worthwhile. But what happens when our cash flows don't hit evenly on the first day of the year. What happens if we get these cash flows in the same years, but on different dates within each year? Well, let's head to the next exercise, exercise three. Here we have the same cash flow values in the same years, but at different points within the year. So let's see what the net present value is. Equals XNPV. The rate is the discount rate stored in C13, comma, the values are the values in B6 to B11, and the dates are the dates in C6 to C11. Close function and enter. Wow, now we see this is a negative value, negative 167. So even though we have the exact same amounts as before, happening in the exact same years as before, since the cash flows occur at different points within each year, this gives us a dramatically different result. And since this is a negative value, it calls into question this investment. Like if it's positive, it's worthwhile. Like positive is go. Negative might be no. 
So that's how we can use the X NPV function to calculate the net present value, including the initial investment amount when the cash flow periods are irregular. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.